that's it yeah good morning uh, distinguished guests uh, invitees and uh, dear participants the postgraduate institute of science university of pera denia uh, is uh, celebrating uh, its uh, silver jubilee uh, in this year that means uh, 25th anniversary so uh, we have uh, decided to organize a series of webinar with uh, eminent uh, speakers and uh, eminent professors uh, to educate uh, our society so as a result uh, today uh, we have gathered we, we are gathered here uh, uh, with the first webinar of this series uh, so uh, the to topic is uh, continuing uh, postgraduate education during covid-19 lockdown a blessing in this uh, so i invite uh, professor hmtg peter vela director of uh, pgis to uh, welcome you all and invite and introduce our speaker today over to you sir okay uh, very good very good morning to all of you ladies and gentlemen uh, professor salind benaragama uh, director of the staff development center of our university my colleague dr mantilaka as well as other members of pgis my dear students and other participants uh, as you all are aware postgraduate institute of science university of pera denia uh, this year is the our silver jubilee to commemorate it we scheduled several activities however due to the covid pandemic situation we were not able to conduct those activities as scheduled our institute is relatively young institute compared to the postgraduate institutes of the world as well as even the postgraduate institute of our country however at present more than 3000 postgraduate institute uh, postgraduate students are following master degrees msc degrees mphil degrees and as well as phd degrees our uh, alumni are serving at several universities and holding responsibilities in several institutes in our country as well as all over the world so we are very proud of our institute i am extremely pleased to say that uh our institute is popular among not only in our country but also all over many part of the world now we are planning to conduct post graduate programs for uh, foreign students also of course at the moment there are several students following our post graduate programs however they have to come over here but we are uh, planning to conduct post graduate programs through online uh, to commemorate our silver jubilee we decided to have a webinar series so therefore we decided to identify most potential people for this webinar series so at first 
we decided to invite one of the best lecturers of our university to initiate this program. Actually, he is not only a teacher to our student, but also a close friend and relative to our uh, students. Therefore, we requested Professor Benaragama to start our webinar series. First of all, I must be thankful to Professor Benaragama for accepting our invitation uh, and spending his valuable time uh, for sharing his knowledge with our students as well as other postgraduate students of our country. Professor Benaragama is, is a, one, one of my friends, one of my good friends, and he is the most talented person I have ever met. That's why we requested him to share his knowledge with you. Professor Benaragama is a, he did his studied in a, uh, Kalutara Mahavidyalaya and he's a product of Kal uh, Kalutara, uh, if I am correct, uh, Kal uh, Kalutara Mahavidyale and Nalanda College in Colombo. In 1994, he, uh, he obtained his uh, bachelor degree in uh, agricultural science and then he followed uh, MPhil degree. After the completion of the MPhil degree, he went to Germany and in 1990, he obtained his PhD after following uh, MSc degree. Currently, Professor Benaragama is the director of Staff Development Center of our university. So without taking much of your time, I would like to invite Professor Benaragama to start this speech. Before his speech, I take this opportunity to thank the organizer of, organizers of this webinar, uh, Dr. Mantilaka, Mr. Asanka, and Mr. Nimesa. So I am thankful to them for organizing this event. Thank you very much, Professor Benaragama. Uh, if you can start now. Uh, right. Very good morning to all of you, uh, Professor Pitavella, Director uh, PGIES, and all the um, uh, organizing committee members of this great series of events. My friends, uh, all my friends, uh, the staff members in the University of Peradeniya, and my dear students. First of all, I must thank Peter Willis especially uh, for inviting me to this, uh, I, I would say, very nice uh, initiative, thinking of students. So this, this is a very nice indication of
my dear student uh, actually professor benaragama phoned me uh, so he mentioned that there's a power interruption uh, and it will be uh, uh, i think uh, the problem will be solved within very short period of time please wait i think uh, uh, the generator will start and then again the computer should uh, restart so i think it takes time anyhow kindly wait until it come to the online platform Okay, um, thank you. Uh, I'm sorry, so sorry. Uh, totally beyond my control. There was a small uh, power failure, but luckily I had a, um, a backup plan. So I was able to get back to the webinar. Sorry for the interruption, but let me start the talk from the beginning. So as uh, I was talking uh, about the, uh, this initiative, thank you very much for this wonderful initiative, thinking of the students. And as I feel, uh, it's a very uh, nice indication to show to all the students how much we, the University of Peradeniya, specifically the Postgraduate Institute of Science, is thinking about you all. So it's a very nice indication. And, and you must be very proud of being a student of the PGIS University of Peradeniya. So, um, so with that uh, very brief, um, thoughts from me. Let me continue the discussion on continuing postgraduate education during COVID-19 pandemic. Are, are we really into this? Why we are talking about this kind of a thing? Because we all know since last year, March, we had to change everything which we have never planned for. So this is why we are talking about this type of a topic. This is why we, are, we have thought of taking you all uh, through a very nice discussion on this continuing postgraduate education during COVID-19 lockdown. But after all, I have another statement here, a blessing in disguise. A blessing in disguise, what is that? Okay, this is what we are going to do. Uh, even though this was introduced as a webinar, I'm sure you know what a webinar is, right? Web seminar. Web-based seminar is combined together now and we call it webinar. But I would rather consider this as uh, uh, that there's no particular word as such, web-based workshop. So let me put these two words together and say web shop or something, right? Because the reason is you will be doing some work with me today live. Even uh, the members who are joining through the um, live broadcasting through either maybe uh, Facebook or YouTube, still you all can join live with this discussion. All right. So this is why I, I call, I, I would like, like to call this as a web shop, 
rather than a webinar, right? Okay. So first of all, let me clarify what this uh, blessing in disguise, what, what does it mean? It's a very famous uh, American idiom. It means something that appears to be bad at first, but it results in something very good in the end. That's an example given here. For example, uh, the, uh, you being caught in the traffic jam, right? You can consider that as a blessing in disguise. For example, if I had missed that flight, so just because of the traffic jam, you miss a flight. But later, you get to know that the flight uh, faced a big accident and crashed and all the people died in the flight. So at that kind of a scenario, you would consider that as if I hadn't missed the flight, I would have been on that plane when it crashed. So that being uh, caught in the traffic, it was a blessing in disguise. So I see very similar thing through this COVID-19 lockdown as well. We all know it's, it's really a hard time for all of us. Some of our close friends, some of our relatives already lost their lives. I'm sure some of you have, at least in my case, I have that feeling because I lost uh, very close friends of mine and some of my relatives as well because of COVID. But having all these tough times, harsh times, connectivity there uh, must be a, a raw bit of or a bit of it's something to learn and every all the devices and connectivity there was no any other option other than moving into this so like teaching and learning online even now we are thinking of of, of course we did some work on online teach uh, on during this time will be important for you as a learner and then some of you will become a teacher academic staff member in the university or a, a teacher in a school so at, at that place that will be important for you to take that knowledge to your students or at least when you become a parent you need that knowledge to pass that knowledge to your student because you need to understand what will happen to the future generations so that's what i said in response to change we need to change our brand we need to change ourselves especially towards i'm now always i'm referring to good side right it doesn't mean that uh, whatever the change happens you need to change according to that uh, change if the change is bad I don't expect you to change towards that bad direction. But always, even if the situation is bad, think what you can do good. Maybe to change the situation if possible, but if not, try to see something good in that situation, bad situation. So are you ready for this online education? This is my question always. So with that, uh, I want to highlight the benefits of online teaching and learning. Maybe still this is uh, very new to Sri Lankan context. Uh, but whenever I am taking a, a workshop or seminar to uh, academic staff members, I show this slide to everybody to show how important, how beneficial this online teaching and learning environment is. One of the main benefits is increased flexibility of time. The one of the I would say fundamentals in online learning is that you as a student will learn as and when you want not in the time that we want as teachers so that's one of the most beautiful things in online teaching and learning not not like this for example now your life uh, connected with me right so this is real time learning this is one aspect only one aspect of online teaching and learning we, we technically say it, synchronous learning, online synchronous learning. That's only one component. But the biggest component in online teaching and learning is asynchronous learning. Asynchronous learning. That is non-synchronous or the student will learn as he wants at, during his leisure time. 
maybe late night, maybe early morning. So that's one of the beautiful things, most beautiful things in online teaching and learning. Secondly, increase flexibility of location. The best example is today. I'm sure you are joining from everywhere in the, in the country. I'm in Peradeniya and I'm in the Faculty of Agriculture today. And uh, Peter Valesa and all the organizers, they are joining from uh, Faculty of Science, uh, Postgraduate Institute of Science. And some of the members are joining from Colombo. And the students, you maybe you're, you're joining from everywhere. So that's another uh, very beautiful uh, aspects or benefits of online teaching and learning. Not like earlier days. Earlier days, you had to come to Peradeniya and be in the class all the time. Now it's on. It's, it's, uh, even from Sri Lanka, you can take a course from the US. Earlier, it, it was a dream for us to take a course from USA, uh, say Harvard University or Cambridge University. It was a dream. We, we could not even think of taking a class from there. But now, Thanks to all these online teaching and learning. Actually, all these things were there, but we didn't know. But now, we also got to know thanks to this COVID-19 lockdown. So this is why I say, in my case, I learned a lot during last year because I wanted to change my brand. I wanted to change me in response to that change that happened last year. So... Thirdly, administrative efficiencies. Just think of your assignments, the students, your assignments. Earlier, you were uh, expected, you were requested or asked to do the assignment on paper. Maybe you do it on uh, Microsoft Word and then you took a printout and you submitted the hard copies. But now, you don't have to do anything of that nature. Because there are so many platforms where you can take your assignments, uh, your, you can share your assignments with the teacher. You can easily upload into your learning management system, LMS, perhaps the Moodle or Google Classroom. So even for the staff members, it's so easy for the bosses, for example, my head of the department or my dean of the faculty or the director of the institute or the vice chancellor of the uh, university, it will be so easy to monitor. So administratively, very efficient online teaching and learning. Believe me, there are some universities in the world which are offering 100% online courses. The whole university is just one room. The whole university is just one room because they don't need any physical things. What they need is a, a place for them to be there. And uh, again, that is also because of the uh, potential requirement of the uh, postal address. Otherwise, they don't need that because there are some institutes in the world even who, who do not have any physical place or location. They're totally online. So administratively very efficient. And fourthly, access to all. Thanks to all these online teaching and learning activities, even now, if just imagine you are, uh, I'm sorry to take a bad example, you are admitted to a hospital just because of a small cart or maybe because of fever, which um, troubles really um, your, your health. Think about, just think that uh, that will be the day of your examination. In the previous cases, you could not take that exam because you are not in the university. But now, thanks to these online things, even if you are in the hospital, if you are kind of little fit enough to take the exam, still you can. And if you are on a wheelchair, now you don't have to come to the university you can take the exams or you can take the classes. Access to all. And number five is information sharing. Online information sharing is so quick, so fast, and so easy. Not only that, online means a wealth of resources. Wealth of resources. No, um, um, I, I now don't like to compare that with the libraries, but now the concept of library is also going little out because of online resources. And now there are online libraries. 
maybe some of the, these some of the things are, are important for us also to take decisions for future administrative decisions so wealth of online resources are, resources are available and finally diverse and enriching experience not like earlier days just think of our usual physical classrooms this is not to put the physical classrooms down not at all by any cost not to do that but with online we can get some diverse and enriching experience for example just think of your physical classrooms when the country gets back to normal you will come back to the university and being in the physical classroom you can go online for some activities i have already tried so many things uh, last year when the students there had there were some uh, time uh, where, where the students came back to university to do some work physically only during some period and at that time i tried so many different things with the students online things being in the physical classroom but going online so so this is what i am thinking of now even if the country gets back to normal i would definitely never go away from this online teaching and learning activities because i see a lot of benefits of online teaching and learning this is why i consider this as a blessing in disguise if just just imagine last year we didn't get the pandemic or the whole world uh, was not suffering from pandemic just imagine what would happen to us definitely um, in in my my guessing we would have uh, not get this online exposure if we had not get this covid-19 pandemic into sri lanka so that's what i say blessing in this guy it's a blessing in this guy for sure especially when we are thinking of education enhancing the educational competencies in our students because this is something that we would have uh, received after say 30 year or 2030 by 2030 we we might have reached in 2030 but but 10 years before we got all these things so it's a can't we now consider this as a blessing yes it is a blessing so already i spoke uh, continuously for a long time now it's time for you to get into some activities so let me share um, another screen for you all just to uh, get your engagement give me one second for that okay i'm going to share my screen be ready for a nice activity just to get your feedback okay i'm sure you all can see my screen right okay so i'm going to copy uh, i'm going to paste the link in the chat to everyone so please use that link to join this activity those who are joining through this um, either facebook or youtube live please type www.menti.com in your browser and then enter this code what you see on the screen on top 3878018 91 oh fastest finger those who are in the meeting with in the zoom link uh, you can use the chat link that i uh, already shared those who are joining through facebook or youtube live please type www.menti.com in your browser and then uh, you will be asked to enter a code that code is given on the top of the screen 
Okay, I'm waiting uh, some more responses. Uh, already 104 members have replied. So this is only in relation to your postgraduate education, right? Not about your, uh, yeah, there could be other stresses like uh, your family, your finances. Uh, there could be other stresses, uh, which we don't have enough time to talk about today, but we will focus only on your postgraduate education, whether you are stressed in relation to your postgraduate education during this time, during this very harsh time. And then let's see, uh, is it okay to be stressed or is it, um, uh, is there anything that we can do about it? Or whether we can say, ah, yeah, we, we are stressed, so we will continue with the stress. Oh, let's, let's discuss all these things today. Can I move forward? Because we have, uh, yeah, only 130 responses. Okay, anyway, the pattern is uh, clear, right? More, um, more than, I uh, would say, yeah, almost like 50%, more than 50% says, uh, little stressed. And yeah, out of uh, 130 members who have already responded, 69 members say little stressed. 30 members say stressed. Nine members say highly stressed. And 20 members say, not stressed at all, no stress at all. So uh, th that this is per se perfectly all right, because this is your perception. This is how you feel, right? I, I simply cannot say uh, this is good, this is bad, and so on. But um, I, I, ra I would rather suggest you all to, um, if possible, have another program. Um, maybe uh, among yourselves also, you can organize something uh, or, or maybe the, the Institute PGIS can organize another one later, how to manage the stress under this kind of a pandemic. Because stress management is also very important in our lives. Not only the uh, stress related to pandemics, it, that it can be anything, stressors. Because ultimately, stressors will harm the body. Stress is just a feeling. So please remember, stress is just a feeling, but that feeling can harm our body. So psychological status can harm the physiological or anatomical status. I'm, I'm not a medical doctor, but this is how I think about the stress. So whenever I get a stress, I will see how I can get away from that stress. So it doesn't mean that I, I never get stresses. I get a lot of stresses, but whenever I get a stress, whenever I feel like I'm stressed, I always try to do something. So because, can you remember the, the second question, the first question that we asked in response to the change, what can we do? Do nothing? No, no, it's not going to work if you are stressed. So in response to the change, change is what? Stress. So in response to the ch stress, what can we do? Do nothing will not work. Change the situation? Well, up to a certain level you can do in some of the stresses, leave the situation. Again, up to a certain level, you can do it. You can leave the situation, but not in all the cases. But the last one, change your brand. I, in most of the cases in my life, I select the last one. And, and, and I, I even I'm, when I'm selecting that, I select it with a lot of care because I want to make sure from that option, I will improve myself. That's the only thing that I always see. I always want to improve myself every day, every month, every year. I want to improve myself. So, so I always select that last option, changing my brand. So this is okay. Yeah. Uh, so once again, majority of you are little stressed. This uh, now from, from here, let me move. Again, back to my presentation. Thank you very much for all your responses. Let me share my PowerPoint once again. Yeah, we were here. Thank you for your feedback. And look at this one. Commonly, actually, this is not a 
scientifically proven thing, but this is common understanding. X-axis, you have the stress level. Y-axis, you have the performance. Generally, it says when you do not have any stress at all, your performance is not at the right level. Okay? So maybe controversial, but, but this is what it says. But when the uh, stress level increases a little bit, you start performing well because you feel it. You feel the, the real need to do something better. Okay? So, so that's uh, another thing that we need to understand here, right? For, for, for example, when there's no stress, you feel like little lethargic or you don't feel like doing some work. But when, you, when the stress level little increases, you feel like you are motivated or you want to do something. You're motivated to do something. And when stress goes little up, you're more focused. You're more focused. But we need to identify where this level comes. We should know where this level comes. Because this is the danger point. After this, your performance goes down. And this peak is different from one to another. For some people, this peak uh, might reach like this. For some people. But for some people, this peak might reach something like this. So, for some people, only uh, within a very little stress range, they come to the peak of performance. For some people, they, they need to get stressed a lot. They need to get stressed a lot to come to the peak. Peak performance. Personally, in my case, <laughs> um, uh, I, I, I want to have a stress to work better. That stress is a lovely stress. Not that I show everything, I, like I'm, I'm so panicked and all these things. No, not like that. Not like that. The stress that I'm referring to here is uh, when you get stuck with the time mainly. In my case, it's the time. Time is the stress to me. So when I see deadlines and uh, um, many other restrictions in relation to time, my, my best performance comes out. This was there even in my um, undergraduate career. Um, just to tell you, this is not to boast, but I played basketball and badminton both. Uh, from my childhood days and even in the university, I played for the university team, basketball and badminton. Even I played hardball cricket, not to the university team, but to the faculty team. Uh, whenever I go for a game, when I'm practicing, my maximum does not come. When I'm practicing, my maximum does not come. But when I'm in the game, when I'm in the match, I get the maximum. Because... I have the stress a little bit. So it could be different from one person to the other. So, so please try to understand you very well. So th this is what I'm, I'm talking about the whole day today, uh, the, during the whole uh, web shop, webinar or whatever, to understand you, to know you very well. As long as you know very well about yourself, I don't think you can go further up. Nobody can take you to a different level. It's only you can take you to a different level. So this is why identifying ourselves is extremely important. What you can do, what you cannot do right now, your potentials, your strengths, and your weaknesses. We'll be doing some work today to identify those things. But uh, I'm, I'm requesting all of you to know you first, even this, uh, this stress level. For example, in your case, uh, some of you said you are not stressed at all. Maybe you are stressed, but you don't know that you are stressed. And some of you say you are very, very highly stressed. Maybe that highly stressed, as I say again, it's a feeling. But see what will uh, what, what will take you there, and and how you can perform better with that stress. 
or is there are, are there any ways of removing that stress? Can you manage that stress? So this is the important thing. Okay, once again, thank you very much for your feedback. Finally, what matters is uh, your balance. Balancing your life is what matters finally. So what we are talking about the postgraduate education during this COVID-19 lockdown and how we can balance this learning, the family lives, the finances and all this. How can we balance it? This is the core or the essence of life. Sometimes you feel like you don't have time to do something. Why is that? It's mainly because you are not managing yourself. You're not managing yourself. You don't know how to balance your life. You don't know how to identify the priorities. Even though I'm talking like this a lot, I also find a lot of difficulties in certain cases to balance my life. But, but I try to identify it and quickly I try to find the solutions for that. I will never go with the problem continuously. So I will try at least within one year to, to uh, overcome that problem if I find a problem in me, in my lifestyle. So what is this balance? We are talking about the education, your assignments, your exams, and finally GPA is there. And you have to cram a lot and, and you're not meeting your friends, but, but you, you're mainly the education side. That's one, I would say, major part of your life now, now at this age, and at this stage, major component in your life. But at the same time, you have your family, your parents, your brothers, sisters, maybe the girlfriend, boyfriend, or the wife, or the husband, the kids. And of course, at the same time, your friends. And the activities that you have been doing so far, the music, dancing, other extracurricular activities, and the sports, and all of a sudden, this COVID-19 pandemic came to us. What happened to us? We somehow continued exams or the studies. We somehow maintained the family because we were with the family. We lost the friends, uh, that, that very nice companionship. We lost that. We cannot meet our friends often. Maybe we can do our music and that kind of work back at home but not sports anymore until the country gets back to normal. So some, some losses are anyway there. But again, maybe you have gone into internet too much. Maybe you are more into Facebook now compared to before pandemic, pre-pandemic situation. The post-pandemic is now you're spending a lot of time in the internet probably on totally unnecessary things. Oh, I don't know. So the problem is how to balance this. Because whatever happens, I'm sure your teachers, your staff members, your lecturers, everybody is uh, forcing you with deadlines. You have to submit this on this date. Otherwise, no, you will not get marks. You will lose this component. And you have the exam midterms and the terms and the assignments and the quizzes and the tutorial. You get all these things. So you have to maintain all these while in the online scenario. So what will happen if that exam component or the study component gets the more weightage, then that part will be heavier. And if you feel like, no, no, I, know, I don't feel like studying. Um, anytime you can study, maybe the, when the country gets back to normal, I will study harder and then this will be the result. So you will spend a lot of time on something else, maybe on the Facebook, maybe on the music, maybe with the families uh, or whatever. But definitely, I, I'm sure not sports because you don't have time, you don't have opportunities to do this. So your studies will be neglected. So this is what we need to make sure, having a good balance even now, even now at this lockdown situation. How can we do that? Who's going to help us? Will there be a person to come behind me and say, okay, do this, do that, do this, do that? Will there be a mentor to me? Will there be a supporter to me? I personally don't think it's you. 
it's totally you who can do this. Of course, you can get ad some advices from your mentors, from your staff members, your teachers, because that's one of our roles, that's one of our responsibilities to support the students, not just teaching. So all academic staff members know that. So don't worry if you have a question, if you have a problem as students, please feel free to talk to us, talk to your sirs and madams. We are always there to help you all. So one of the best things that I see to spend uh, very easily that you can do to spend a balanced life is identify your priorities. Identifying your priority. This is one of the most important and most easiest things to do. Identifying your priorities. But the problem is, in most of the cases, we don't know how to identify the priority. So let's do a small work here. Imagine you have uh, four boxes, all the activities that you can think of in your life, you can put into four boxes. Just imagine like this. What are these four boxes? One box can be urgent and important. Urgent work and important work. Second box can be not urgent, but important. Not urgent, but important. Third box, urgent, but not important. And the last box, not urgent, not important. If you can put all the things that you do in your life into these four boxes, if you can identify that, I'm sure your life will be very successful. Your life will be very successful. If you just think of a person whose life is not successful, from the other person's point of view, not in the perspective of that particular person, but from the perspective of the society, because usually, whether we like it or not, usually we judge people. And we say, okay, that person is successful. This person is not successful and so on. But remember, success is what you feel. Finally, if you are happy with that success, that's good enough for you. But, but at the same time, remember, there's a judgment by the society. We can't forget that component because we are living in a society. We are living with the society. So you cannot simply ignore the society and say, who cares what other people think? I work as I want. Yeah, you can work in that level when you go up, very up in the ladder. For example, um, uh, uh, people like, uh, let me take examples from Sri Lanka, people like Dambika Perla, one of the richest persons in Sri Lanka. For him, I, I don't think he needs to think too much what the society thinks. If you look at, uh, if you just watch the things that he says, if you listen to him, even uh, yesterday there was a nice discussion in the TV, yesterday or day before, there was a nice discussion in the TV with the uh, great or, or the big uh, top uh, businessman in Sri Lanka, four businessmen in Sri Lanka. So they talk very freely because for them, the, the whole society is going behind them. Not that they need the society. And they conquered the, not only Sri Lanka, the whole world. But as beginners, as for all of us, we need to think seriously about the society as well. So the point that I want to highlight is the judgment by the society, we cannot stop. We cannot stop and we cannot avoid. But remember, you can be happy with what you have as well. But always make sure you improve yourself to improve your brand. So coming back to these four boxes, how to identify the priorities? Just imagine your assignments, even this COVID-19 pandemic, I'm sure you have deadlines. Um, if I name the boxes one, two, three, and four, if I name the boxes one, two, three, and four, the first one, okay, let me, let me write it down if possible. Say this is one. Okay, this is two. And uh, yeah, sorry. This is, oops, this is three. And this is four. Oh, I'm having trouble. Okay, one, two, three, four. Can you quickly, those who are joining through this uh, Zoom link, can you put 
this number, where would you put assignments into? In the chat, quickly. One or two or three or four. At least some members, please. Quickly type the number that assignments should go. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, very good. So definitely assignments should go here. They are urgent and important. Thank you very much for your support. Uh, please uh, use the chat, right? Not the Q&A uh, in answering these questions because we will keep the Q&A section for actual Q&A, right? I'm sorry, uh, that's my mistake. I could not tell you that before. We will leave the Q&A section for actual Q&A, but at the same time, to join the meeting live, uh, we will use the chat area. Okay, the second thing, medical emergency. Where would you put that? Again, quickly on the chat. Yeah, thank you. No doubt, urgent and important. Urgent and important. A house is on fire. Now, don't answer right now. Just listen. House is on fire. And that house is yours. That's one scenario. And the house is on fire, which is uh, which you see when you are walking along the road, you see there's a house which is on fire. So two scenarios. So I'm sure when you see your house is on fire, you would definitely put that under urgent and important. And when you are walking, when you are walking along the road, you see there's a house which is on fire. And that day you are walking towards the university to sit for an examination. You have only one hour left to reach the university. At that time, would you put this into urgent and important or what? Can I now see the answer? Okay, in the chat. Oh, very good. Yeah, many members say it's urgent. It's true that you know it's urgent, but it's not important now because it's content or sorry, context specific. It's context specific. This is what you need to do in identifying priorities. It's not that you're being selfish. Don't feel like that. It's not that you're being selfish, but you need to identify your priority because if you go to uh, solve this problem and if you miss the exam, what would happen? So always put, try, to, try to weigh the activities and then decide where it should go. So I will now put this house under urgent and important thinking, it's either your house or somebody's house, which you know, and, and you, you don't have any urgent other work to attend. Because in that previous example, you're, you're, you're going for the exam, which is very urgent and very important. So you cannot, you should not sacrifice that kind of a thing for this kind of a thing, because it's, it's not that you're being selfish. Don't feel bad. It's identifying priorities. Your studies, day-to-day -day studies. Okay. What, what, where, where, where would you put? Um, thank you. There's a question. I, I forgot to take that. Uh, there's a question in the chat. What if there is a person in life threatened? Is it still important? Uh, so your question is, is, is the exam important still, right? So when you are walking along the road, you see a person who's uh, with a life threatening uh, level, kind of level, that kind of a situation, what would you do? Yes, again, context specific. What would happen to you if you miss the exam? And what would happen if you do not attend to that person? So you have to wait and you have to identify it. For example, will that be considered in the university as an excuse? So this is what I say. The whole life is kind of full of judgments, full of judgments, which we cannot avoid. 
maybe the judgment is by us or maybe the judgment is by somebody else. Okay, so let me put uh, this learning as, uh, yeah, very good. You all have identified it very correctly. So it's not urgent if you do it properly, but it's very important. It's important, but not urgent. It's not urgent only if you study continuously. But day after tomorrow will be the exam. And you are today starting studying for the first time. You are seeing the notes for the first time. At that time, this studying goes to urgent and important because you have not done anything before. You have not done anything before. So that's the reason. Okay? So we have to be little cautious. You have to be little careful um, in identifying the priorities and, and, and deciding the work throughout the day. Personality. Improving your personality. I'm sure you know where it should go. It's not urgent. You cannot urgently improve your personality anyway, but it's important. So definitely it should go here. It's not urgent, but it's important. Extremely important, I would say. So this is actually a, one of the things that we Sri Lankans uh, do not pay much attention on. Even in our education system, our, um, our culture, we are not so geared towards improving personality, but we judge people saying, yo, what is this personality? His personality is not good and uh, he could have improved his personality. But we, we judge people without allowing them to improve. So, so please remember, personality is something that you all can improve. We all can improve and easily, very easily. Only thing is you need to start thinking about it. You need to start thinking about it. as long as you don't think about it, you will never improve your personality for sure. Phone calls, sorry. Phone calls, really troubling. It's really troubling. Sometimes, uh, yeah, it, it could be very urgent, very important. For example, you are getting a phone call from your parents who are staying alone at home. So I would definitely put that call under urgent and important. Definitely, yes. Maybe you are receiving a phone call from your uh, wife or husband or kids. But remember to tell them beforehand uh, how, whether you, you, they can call you uh, for um, emergencies. For example, if, this, if the kid calls you and say, uh, when you come back today, please bring bread. So please have a good discussion and uh, even with your girlfriend or boyfriend, have a good discussion beforehand and let them know when to call. So in that kind of a situation, you will know when you get a call from your uh, maybe wife or husband or girl or boy or kid, you will know this is an emergency. This is very, very uh, ridiculous in Sri Lanka. In Sri Lankan context, people don't know how to use the mobile phone. Honestly speaking, just think of yourselves as well. It's not that I'm blaming anybody, but I want to improve the use of mobile phones, that use of mobile phone, not the technology, but the ethical use, moral values of using mobile phones. For example, I never call a person during the daytime asking a mobile number of somebody else. Asking a mobile phone a number of somebody else. I never call a person. I, if I want to find a, a number from one of my friends, I just put a chat, a message and say, can you kindly tell, uh, send me the number of this person whenever you get a free time. That's how I write messages. But Usually, I get a minimum of 5 to 10 phone calls a day, believe me, 5 to 10 calls a day, asking mobile phone numbers of some other people. It's really, really troubling because I don't know why these people are calling me, so I answer. When I answer, they say, ah, Chalinda, uh, can you kindly uh, send me the phone number of this person? And I think, what? Why, why you are troubling me like this? I, so now, when, 
whenever I'm working, I'm, I'm on my work, I usually um, don't answer those kind of calls because I, it, it's really disturbing because I think it's imp- uh, urgent even though it's not important for me, I, I believe it's urgent, but looks like most of the phone calls that you receive in a day are not urgent, not important. So this is the problem. So these are common things, even this uh, COVID-19 lockdown, because you are, you, we are using a lot the mobile phone. We are depending on the mobile phone a lot, more than what we were used to. So this is why I'm taking some time here to explain all this. So, so we can say urgent, but not important. But Facebook, the time that you spend on Facebook, I'm sure we all can easily put this into not urgent, not important. I don't know how this uh, Facebook concept came into Mark Zuckerberg's uh, mind. Brilliant brain though, but I don't know how it came to his mind to make this kind of a social network. Because when you go into Facebook, you don't don't feel like coming back. You don't feel like coming back because just if you search the Google, um, if you are not searching uh, through a mobile phone, um, if you are searching through a desktop or a tablet or something, there's a limit in the Google. You You can see maybe 20, 50 or something. And then after that, you see pages. So if you want, you can go to the next page. But Facebook is not like that. You scroll up, scroll up, scroll up, scroll up. There's no end. There's no end at all. So you are stuck. Unintentionally, you are stuck in Facebook. So please try to avoid the time that you spend on Facebook. In the Facebook, I'm sure you know, you can can check uh, how much time that you are spending on Facebook. Please check that time and decide is it worth? Decide, it, it, is it worth? Because today I'm going to tell you what you can do online, much more than what you have been doing. What are the options available for you to improve your postgraduate learning in, during this COVID-19 lockdown? So try to identify these. And if you are really good at time management, what you need to do is increase this yellow box. Increase as much as possible. Not the pink one, not the, uh, this beige one, not the blue one. Definitely try to minimize the blue one as much as possible. And always make sure, e- even this making the pink one bigger is really stressful. Because all the things are urgent, all the things are important. So definitely you will be at a stress. So if you work very nicely in a very um, uh, relaxed manner, your yellow box will be very big. So please try to make the yellow box bigger always. Okay, so let me continue. And the second thing that you can do is to spend a balanced life, know the essential skills for learning and improve them. It's not just knowing it, but improving them as well. Okay, so we have to be very, very uh, focused on these kind of things, at least from today onwards. Know the essential skills for learning. Uh, Now, I'm not referring to the subjects that you are learning. Your subjects are, of course, number one, I would put everything on top. But if you improve your learning skills, because after master's or after PhD that you obtain from the PGIS, your life is not come to an end. You will start the life after graduation. They are. You don't find, you don't get your staff members with you. You have to work alone. So what you need to do is you need to improve the essential skills. I'm not going to touch upon most of the things today, but I'm going to show you what you can do. Simply, for example, uh, improve your listening skills, improve your presentations and uh, presentation skills and viva facing skills targeting the university education, mostly focusing on the speaking skills, and then improve your reading skills and the writing skills. If you can improve these mainly, okay, let me put the presentation skills and viva facing skills and the speaking skills, right? And then you can take public speaking also into this. And generally we can find all these things as speaking skills. 
when you look at these four sections listening speaking reading and writing if you can think of improving yourself maybe um, uh, you might feel ayo this is we, we are so late we are so late to learn no no not at all still you have enough time to learn for example at this age i'm 50 now at this age still i'm learning i'm trying my best to improve my listening i'm trying my best to improve my speaking my presentation skills i'm i'm, I'm still trying my best to improve my reading and writing still i'm improving for for many reasons one is i want to improve my work my quality of work i want to improve another reason is i want to pass to other generations other people what i know i'm enjoying a lot with that because passing that to other people will improve the quality of the whole society it's not that you, when you learn something just keep it with you no that will not serve the purpose you learn something and then pass that to other people so together we will rise as a nation so this is the reason why i'm requesting all of you to improve your all these skill, skills not necessarily targeting the uh, uh, postgraduate studies during uh, your your time in the pgis even life after so if you look at the usual use of uh, these four skills writing reading speaking and listening this is how an average person uses right if you think of all the communication efforts uh, it, it's uh, usually it's said uh, if, you, if you think of an average person who lives for 70 years say or 80 years we'll say within that lifetime that person will spend about 70% of the total time from the birth until he dies if you take all the all the time that he spends 70% of the time is spent on communicating with somebody 70% of the time is spent on communicating with somebody and only 30% is spent by alone that that includes your sleeping time your eating time if you are eating alone or your driving time if you are driving alone so all these times combined together 30% 70% you are with the society so that that tells something again 70% you are with society maybe you are with your wife or somebody you are you are there so 70% from that 70% about 45% of the time if you if you think that 70% as 100% 45% is spent on listening 30% of the time is spent on speaking 16% on reading and 9% on writing so when you combine speaking and listening look at this 75 75% of the time we spent on speaking and listening have we ever thought of improving these components now okay look look at the scenario from the grade 1 up until now amount taught since grade 1 we were taught to how to write how to write writing 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 so much of writing up to a levels writing only nothing else of course with some reading so the least used one is taught the most so unfortunate but that's the reality the least used one in the life is taught mostly and then the reading 16% not that bad but 16% uh, again reading is also taught but not as much as writing and look at the speaking and listening i'm just asking you all just think about yourself how many of you have had a training on speaking i'm sure not many i'm sure not many even if you have had a training maybe just one workshop maybe two workshops definitely not 100 workshops on speaking for sure i guarantee and think of listening i bet now i see 193 participants here today out of this 193 94 are there including me but so 93 are there in the audience out of this 193 i guarantee i bet i'm 100 sure not even 10 members have had a training on listening 
not even 10 members. I'm 100% sure. This is not about taking the listening exam in IELTS or TOEFL. That's, that's where you are taking an exam on listening, not that. I'm referring to a training on listening. Effective learning, effective listening. All right. I'm 100% sure you have never had a training. But look at this. 45% of the time that we spend is on listening. So without a training, how do we listen? No, the thing is, we just believe, just because we have the ears, just because we have the ears, we believe it's good enough because we can hear. Hearing and listening are totally two different things. Totally two different things. So have we ever got ourselves trained? So this is what I'm, I'm, I'm promoting. This time, this COVID-19 lockdown time is the best time that you can think of improving all these things. You will never get a chance like this, this kind of a lockdown time. Honestly speaking, in my case, I improved a lot during last year. And if I think of my academic career for 22 years in this university, last year was my best year in terms of my improvement. My performance last year was the best. So, so I, I, I always believe, why can't you all, why can't we all take that kind of, uh, go for that kind of a thinking and take this time to improve ourselves? That's what I say. You will never get a time like this. So please, this is one of the areas that we all can think of improving ourselves. Very importantly. And as I said earlier, whether we like it or not, the society um, expects something from us. The society expects something from us. What is that? They're expecting not one thing, but many things. As I said, they judge us. They say, okay, you are good, you are bad, you are good, you are bad, you are, you are not up to the expectation, you are not up to the standards. They judge us. We can't avoid that simply because Think of you are going for an interview. What would they do? Simply they ju judge you. During the interview, they judge you and say, are you a They can't speak even. They don't know how to market themselves. They don't know the subject even. So they judge you. When you want to get married, what would happen there? Again, a judgment. When you want to find a good wife or a husband or girlfriend or boyfriend, what is happening there? Judgment. Whether you like it or not, people judge you. So the same thing. You are being judged by the society. So remember how this judgment comes. Earlier, people were talking about soft skills, but not anymore. But in Sri Lanka, still people are talking about soft skills. But the, the, the real term that the whole world is talking about is 21st century skills. Why, why do people talk about this? I'm sure just to, uh, you, you know about these things, but just to uh, give uh, some basic backgrounds uh, for the origin of the classroom learning that we are enjoying now, that the, the, those, that type of classroom learning environment has been originated because of the industrial revolution. Because of the industrial revolution towards the late uh, 18th century. Because during that industrial, until the industrial revolution, people learned what they wanted to learn. People learned what they wanted to learn. Just think of Sri Lankan education system earlier. Those who wanted to learn bow and arrow, they went to a teacher and they learned it. Those who wanted to learn horse riding, they went to a teacher, they learned it. And it's not that they had, all the students had the same time of learning. Those who learned quickly, they went uh, from the school, they left the school quickly. And those who took time, they learned until the competency comes and then they le left the school. And the best student received the daughter of the teacher also. So that this of type of that type of learning was there earlier. That was a situation in the whole world. And later with the industrial revolution, mainly with the uh, machine involvements, people wanted to develop a group of people who can follow the guidelines in the same way, 
in the same way. That was the beginning of this formal education. So what the teacher does is, okay, we prepare a curriculum and we ask all the students to sit in the same class. We go and tell everybody, okay, listen, learn this, write this down, learn this and so on. And that's what the whole world is even practicing now, formal education. So later, uh, towards the 1950s, 1960s, the world realized that system will not work for the betterment of the mankind. The reason is people realized that type of uh, teaching and learning environment will make people machines because the original idea, idea was to produce some people to work with machines. And as a result, towards 1950s, people realized people are also becoming machines. No thinking. That's why then people started talking about soft skills, people skills. And then they introduced all the, the top people in the world, they introduced these things to everybody. And Sri Lanka, as a developing country, which is very uh, far away from the, the developed countries, we get things very late, usually. So we got the soft skills uh, into our discussions not many years back, maybe five, six years back, very recently. And we are starting now talking about the soft skills, and, but now the world is moving away from the soft skills and now they are talking about 21st century skills. So this is why I wanted to introduce this to you all now. Okay, right. So what are these 21st century skills? Mainly three categories, learning skills, <coughs> literacy skills, and life skills. So under learning skills, there are four things, critical thinking, creativity, collaborative, uh, co collaboration, and communication. And about, uh, from these uh, literacy skills, um, you get information, uh, sorry, you get information, and then media and technology. And then, Life skills, there are many, there are many. So how can we improve these things? Especially these days, the whole world is talking about literacy skills and not just literacy skills, but the digital literacy skills. Information literacy, digital. Media literacy, digital. Of course, technology literacy. And with the development of the pandemic last year, it has gone very high, very up. So it's high time for all of us to think about these things, how the world is moving. So this is why I said, had uh, this, uh, if, if this uh, COVID-19 would have not come to Sri Lanka last year, I'm sure we will get all these things in 2030. 2030, so late. So this is why I always believe it's a blessing in disguise. It's a blessing in disguise, right? Okay, so if you look at what the society is expecting, everywhere in the world, this is what the society is expecting. 21st century learner, literacy, numeracy. And look at where your subjects are falling. Your subjects are here on this white circle, on this white circle. So what are there? embedded in the subjects, collaboration and leadership, lifelong learning, digital literacy, communication, and so on and so forth. So it's not the subjects that the world is expecting from you all. Beyond that, more than that. Of course, the subjects are important. That's why I said subjects are on the top, no argument. But with that, you need to develop all these skills in you. Then only you can show that this is your brand. This is my brand. And look at this, even within this digital literacy is a big component. So this COVID-19 pandemic lockdown time is the best time to improve your digital literacy. You will never get a time like this. I personally improved a lot in relation to my digital literacy, but still I'm trying because I'm, I'm still nowhere. I'm at a very lower level, but I'm, I want to improve a lot. I want to learn more and more on digital literacy. I want to improve my digital literacy. So 
with that, uh, I'm sure you know you are belonging to totally different generation compared to us, right? For example, my parents, they belong to this uh, builders group, right? And yeah, I would say my father belongs to builders group, but my mother belongs to baby boomers group, and I belong to this group. And look at you in your case, I'm sure most of you belong to either Generation Z, the students, or Generation Alpha. And surely we will get another generation very quickly. Still, the world does not know what that generation name is. So depending on these generations, their thinking pattern is different, their learning patterns are different, their uh, the perceptions are different. So we need to identify all these things. We all need to identify all these things. For example, if you, the students, now I'm referring to the students, if you are at the age of uh, like 25 and 35, when you make kids, and when your kids grow older, don't feel bad if they are thinking different to what you are thinking. Don't feel bad. That's so natural. That's the generation gap. Don't expect the kids to think in the same way that the parents are thinking. It's unfair by them. It's really unfair by them. Because still I remember my parents were blaming me at certain places, um, saying that uh, you are not doing this and we did that and we ate those things at that time and all these, I, I still remember. And now I see my generation friends, my friends, they blame their kids saying that you are not going even outside, you are just on the phone all the time, you are with the computer, I don't know what has happened to you all, blaming all the time. No point of blaming. I'm sure the future will be something different. So I believe, I, this is something that I developed um, in my thinking, this, this name is, please, please don't uh, try to remember this name because this is not at all a, a common uh, understanding, but this is something that I created generation mask or generation c19 we don't know this might be the future we might see people all the time with the mask we might see people all the time with the mask right so so we will lose the uh, the most important nonverbal cues for example right so your mask might carry some digital explanations or expressions like what you see on the bottom of my screen right now right bottom so when you are smiling the the mask also shows digitally that you are smiling otherwise you don't know what is happening inside because these non-verbal cues are really important for us to take the levels up whether we like it or not this will be the future so be prepared be prepared who are you do you know that who you are Shall we do a small work now, very quickly, right? So what we can do is, um, I want to know whether you are familiar with your strengths and weaknesses very quickly. We'll spend about five minutes maximum. Yeah, maybe, yeah, maximum five minutes. Do you know your strengths and weaknesses? Are you sure? So let's do a small work here. So I'm going to, uh, give me one second. Sorry. I'm going to have a link in the chat once again so that you all can uh, go to that website and come up with your ideas. I just want to see whether you know about yourself. Okay. So those who are joining through this web, uh, you can, uh, you, those who are joining through this uh, Zoom link, you can use this link that I'm going to, uh, I have already pasted in the chat. Please uh, go to that link. Don't do anything. I will explain you what to do. Don't do anything right now, right? And those who are joining through uh, the Facebook, or YouTube live, you all can take this message, this uh, web link, 
in your browser. HTTPS double dot slash slash padlet.com challenge the B slash PGIS. Those who are joining through that, they can join in that way. But those who are joining through the Zoom, you all can use the link that I have already given in the chat. So we'll spend about just two minutes or maybe two, three minutes. If you know about yourself, it, it won't take much time. But if you don't know about yourself, it will take long time. So what we are going to do is, okay, I'm sure now you all can see my screen. So when you come to the screen, what you need to do is just click on the uh, pink color circle. I'm sure you see there's a pink color circle with a plus sign at the bottom. In your screen, when you go to this Padlet, right? you will see a um, pink color circle with a white color plus sign at the bottom. Just click on that and then you will get a text box like what you see. Now you can, now you need to shift uh, between two screens, okay? So I'm, I'm training you to uh, use digital devices. So you maybe you can take a different tab or, or a different window have the meeting, Zoom meeting on one tab and then have the Padlet uh, screen on another tab. And click on that uh, plus sign at the bottom. I see there are okay, already 60 plus members. Yeah, so quickly click on the plus sign and then you get a screen like this. So there are, you can, if you want, you can write your name. That's not compulsory. Just write down uh, strengths and weaknesses. Two, just two. The, the most, the biggest two strengths and the biggest two weaknesses that you have. And if, if you want to uh, correct it, what you have already posted, uh, I'm sure you see the snowball, uh, the snowman sign on the right top corner in your post, three dots, three vertical dots. And and click on that, you can edit it. If you want to edit it, you can edit in that way. The same post. Is it clear? I'm sure I, I, I made you all clear. So very quickly, uh, please do it. At least uh, 50, 60 members, if you can join. That would be lovely. So during this time, if you want, you can have a cup of tea or a cup of coffee, coffee uh, just, just to relax because we have some time in this activity. I want you to write down two strengths and two weaknesses, not just one, not just one, right? By accidentally, if you uh, already posted your post, you can go up uh, again uh, on the top of your post, on the three dots and there you can edit the post. Maybe you are using this for the first time, so don't worry, even if you make a mistake, fine, that's fine. Most importantly, I would love to see the weaknesses that you have identified in you, the weaknesses. Okay, already 33 members have uh, joined the Padlet. That's okay, very good. Those who cannot join through the Padlet, you can place your answer in the chat as well. That is also okay, not in the Q&A, but in the chat. If you uh, want, you can just send it directly to me or only to the panelists. 
that is also fine. And, and those who have already answered, just think about this one. For how long? Now, now I'm referring to weaknesses, right? Because now I see um, some members say very emotional, sensitive, overthinking, missing the focus, uh, easily stressed, not being able to manage time. Um, what else? Uh, having fear, sometimes uh, lack of confidence, angry, lazy. I, I see there are, there are many uh, terms that you use to explain your weaknesses. My next question is, it's really good that at least you know about yourself. Little bit, little bit. I'm sure still it's little bit, not too much. Um, just think in this way. For how many years you have been having these weaknesses in you? I want to see that in the chat very quickly. Just think of one weakness. So even when you, when you place that idea in the chat, that number in the chat, nobody knows what your weakness was. So don't worry. Now I'm asking for how many years you have been having these weaknesses in you? Just an approximate number. Please place that in the chat. For how many years, roughly? Okay. I see two years, 20 years, eight years from birth. Two years, 24 years, 25, 10, 4, 10, 2, 3, as long as I can remember, 10, lifetime, 5, 10, 20, 20, from birth, 8. Oh, oh, it's interesting. What does this mean? What does this mean now? So this means you have not done anything to you. Now I'm blaming now I am blaming you. So when you say 10 years, 20 years since birth and so on, when you have, when you identify these weaknesses, have you done anything to rectify these weaknesses? That's why you have, I'm sure you have not done anything. So this is why you say you have been having these weaknesses for 20 years or 10 years or four years or so. Even two years, too long. Please. Consider this time as the best time, this lockdown time as the best time for you to get these weaknesses rectified. Think in that way and start doing something immediately to rectify these weaknesses. Otherwise, what will happen? Until you die, when you even come to the age of 60 or 70, by any chance, if I live until that age, your age, if I ask you the same question, I am 100% sure you will say the same. Which has no meaning. Which has no meaning. So let me share one of my personal experiences. I was a, uh, actually from my grade one up to grade 12, I was the first in the class, even in Kalutra Vidyale and even when I came to Nalanda College, Kalambu. I was the first in the class. Only two times I have become, become uh, number two in the class. Only once in my life I have become number three in the class. All the other exams, all the other times, I was the number one in the class. So everyone, everyone believed in my A-levels, during my A-level time, uh, our Chalinda will definitely uh, pass the exam with flying colors and enter into the medical faculty and so on. But first time, my results were three Cs and one S. Nowhere, not a single university was there to, for, for that result. And I did the second time, only two Bs and two Cs. During our time, there were four subjects, two Bs and two Cs. Again, not enough to enter into medical faculty. I still don't know what has happened to me. Even my parents were so down and my, my teachers were so down with my results. Still, I don't know what happened. But from that time, that was in 1991, and uh, my, my, uh, one of my uncles advised me, Puta, write down the strengths and weaknesses that you have. So that was the first time I started thinking about me, 1991. Uh, so 
writing down strengths and the weaknesses. Believe me, since then, every year, I write, write down my strengths and weaknesses. Believe me. I'm, I'm just sharing what I'm ex uh, right now doing. So every December, I look at the last year's strength and weakness list. Of course, I prepare the strength and weakness list for this year and look at the last year one. I want to see the same strengths are there, plus another new strength coming up. And I want to see the last year weaknesses and this year weaknesses. And if I'm carrying the same weakness this year, I feel really bad because I have not done anything to me during this last year. So based on this year's weakness list, I plan for the next year. How can I remove these weaknesses? So I don't want to keep the same weakness for two years continuously, consecutively. So please think of doing these kind of things. Otherwise, you will go with the weakness every year and you will write down this on paper without doing anything. So for example, if you feel like you, you get angry easily, do something, not to control the anger, but to manage the anger. Nobody can control the anger. Nobody can, unless you reach a totally different mental status, which is, I, I, I believe it's, it's very difficult, extremely difficult, but you can easily manage the anger. Getting anger is okay because it's, it's a hormonal activity. If you get angry easily, be happy. Your hormonal system is working very nicely. You have to be very happy. The problem is when you get the anger, the action that you take is the problem. So you have to manage that action, not the anger. Not the anger because it's a feeling. Don't try to um, um, always put, the, put your feelings down. When you get the feeling, see what you can do with that or, or to or overcome that, especially the actions of that feeling. That's something that we all can do. Okay, so my point here is this COVID-19 lockdown time is the best time to see all these things. I'm sure you all can. So let me go back to my presentation. Um, okay, yeah. Thank you very much for your feedback. If possible, try to identify more and more strengths and more and more weaknesses. Identifying strengths is also important, then you know what you can do. If not, if you cannot do that, you can ask your friends about your strengths, about your weaknesses. Even a totally distant person, you can ask from him or her, tell me your weaknesses. Uh, tell, tell me my weaknesses, right? So, so easily you can get that judgment. You don't have to agree. You don't have to agree. You can't say, no, no, I don't have that weakness. How can you say like that? No, better not to fight with that person. Just get that idea. Later, you can decide whether you can agree or not. But you can start thinking about that idea. That's important. So uh, how to identify the strengths and weaknesses? I think uh, it's, it's very important to know uh, in the life, but I, I don't want to go into details. Most importantly, remember uh, to think your life in terms of intelligences, not merely the knowledge but the intelligence. Unfortunately, I'm sorry to say this, Sri Lankan education system does not cater to the intelligences. I'm referring to the uh, primary and secondary uh, education system in the country. There are eight, eight intelligences, we call it as multiple intelligences. So it's expected to have all these eight. Of, of course, there's, there, there's there are some people who say there are nine intelligences, but I'm, I'm mainly focusing on these most popular eight intelligences. So these eight intelligences must be there in all the people, not in the equal way, but all these eight intelligences must be there in everybody. Maybe you're, you are too good at logically or mathematically. So you, you will be logic smart, mostly. But at the same time, you have to have other intelligences as well. Maybe you are music smart. That, that component is very strong. But at the same time, you have to have other intelligences as well. So this is what we are trying our best in the university education to improve your intelligences. Because in Sri Lanka, what I see is people are knowledgeable, but not intelligent. Sorry to say, but that's the reality. 
because our education system does not promote intelligence in people. We have to have a very drastic change in the system. Otherwise, we will be the same nation for another 20, 40 years, for sure. Very quickly, uh, shall we know uh, whether you are aware of the opportunities that are available for you all? I would like to know that kind of a response. Uh, I like to get uh, that kind of a response as well from you all. So shall we go into another quick activity? Because talking too much uh, always, again, that does not go into your brains, I'm sure. So once again, another uh, Mentimeter activity. Let me take that, sorry. Okay, here we are. So now you are very familiar with Mentimeter. So I'm going to uh, place the link in the chat. Take, let me. So the link is there in the chat. You can enter into this and you will get uh, on your device eight questions with a colored circle. So you just drag the color circle into the place where your awareness level displays, right? So as you think, whether you are very highly aware or very low aware about these things. Those who are joining through the Facebook or YouTube live, you can type this www.menti.com in your browser and enter this code 29765195, which you see on the top of the screen. Oh, fastest finger members. Thank you, already 57 members have joined the activity. Really good to see your enthusiasm. Okay, great. Uh, yeah, shall we move forward? Others can join. It's okay. We, we will start the talking uh, discussion. And uh, during this discussion time, the other members also can complete the task. That's perfectly all right. I, I'm not going to move away from the screen, so don't worry. Uh, so those who are still answering, please continue to do so. Um, yeah. So I'm just asking your level of awareness about these eight aspects. Coursera courses, average is five. So this means, uh, yeah, there are some members who know it very well, but there are some members who have even never heard of 32. Do, don't worry, don't feel bad about this because anyway, for everything, there, there is always a starting point. Even for me, there was a starting date, which I got to know about Coursera courses. So don't worry at all, right? Even when you say very low awareness, that's, that at all does not mean that you are bad, that no, not at all, right? So don't feel bad. So I just want to see up to what extent I need to continue my discussion. That's the only reason. 
So Coursera courses, uh, yeah, the average is 4.9. Uh, that means many members are not very aware, well aware. Udacity courses, uh, yeah, it looks like it's not so popular as Coursera. Okay, that's fine. And then Khan Academy courses, again, the average is five. Uh, looks like it's kind of uh, similar to your awareness about Coursera courses. Okay, that's fine. E-portfolios, oh, average is 3.1. That means not many people know about it. Fine, that's okay. Read out loud auction in PDF. Oh, oh, I expected uh, uh, this. Yeah, I actually expected it. That's okay. So you are, you are not very familiar with that. And then mind mapping. Again, the average is 4.5. Not many members know about it. That's okay. TED Talks. Some members know it very well, but some members know. Google Sites for website creation. Okay, many members know it. So the highest average is 5.8 is there, but still there are some members like 24 members who are totally uh, unaware about or low aware uh, about, the, the, about these things. That's okay. Let me very quickly uh, discuss uh, and just to show you, enlighten you, what these things are all about uh, because we have very limited time. So within that time, I will try my best to give you some insights on these things. So let me go back to our presentation. We were here. Yeah, hope you can, sorry, once again, let me take that. Okay, we were here. So my always request to you all is expand your awareness. Expand your awareness on everything. Awaken your divine potential because you still, I'm 100% sure you don't know your potential. You don't know what your potential is. So always try to expand and, and, and know this potential and to use this potential, you have to do a lot, right? Um, so let me very quickly go through these um, Coursera's and the Udemy's and the Udacity's and so on. All these things are known as MOOCs, Massive Open Online Courses, which is very new to Sri Lanka yet. Actually, last year, I um, during this pandemic time where the students were just being at home, I uh, passed this message to all the students in our faculty. And believe me, some of the students have completed the 30 plus courses, online courses from these service providers. Fantastic. Not just for the certificate, some of the students have learned it for knowledge and for the experience. So it's, too, it's not too late. That's a starting point anyway. So you can start thinking about these things from today onwards. There are, there are many MOOC providers, right? MOOC is a, it's a generic name that we use for uh, massive open online courses. There are many MOOC providers like Coursera. Coursera is just one MOOC provider. Udemy is one MOOC provider. Khan Academy is one MOOC provider. And iMOOCs, Allison, Udacity, all these things are MOOC providers. So I'm opening up these avenues for you all. Use this time to get yourself certified by these MOOCs. For example, you can take a course now being in Sri Lanka from the Harvard University or from the Michigan State University or California Davis University or University of London or University of Western Australia, wherever in the world, the leading universities offer courses through these platforms. Actually, these uh, service providers are just, they are companies. Under these companies, there are many universities who are offering programs. So you can find maybe directly related to your master's program that you are doing at PGIS to top up the knowledge that you are gaining from there, right? You can top up the same topics. And at the same time, you can take some courses to improve your personality. There are many courses on that to improve your personality. Even there are courses to improve creativity because it, it, this is something that I want to highlight here. Many people think creativity cannot be taught which I'm totally against because I, I strongly believe creativity also can be taught or passed 
to other people. And there are very nice MOOCs on creativity, which you can follow and you can improve your creativity, which is something lacking, seriously lacking in Sri Lanka. Thank, uh, actually, that's because of the formal education system, which we, were, uh, we, we have obtained from the British people. Right. So uh, there are many important things. For example, there are many free Coursera courses. Uh, you can go to the website and just search, spend some time before you register into a course. Spend a lot of time, I would say. And uh, even the Khan Academy courses, all are free, totally free. Coursera courses, Alison and all the other courses, they are not, all, it's not that all the courses are free. But last year, there was a big uh, offer by the Coursera where they made most of the courses free, freely available for students. That's what I did. Uh, uh, I passed that message to the students. So the students took a lot of courses for free. But even now, there are many free courses, but even now, if not, you can take courses from even Khan Academy like places because all the courses in the Khan Academy are free. And Udacity is a very nice place. Uh, it's not that I'm promoting companies, but I'm trying to help you all. In Udacity's, uh, Udacity, there are new concepts called uh, nano degrees, which is still new to Sri Lanka, I'm sure. Maybe uh, this is the first time that you all are also hearing. Nano degrees. Degree programs, which can be completed within a few months. They are called, they, these degree programs are called nano degrees. I'm sure these are some of the things that we can think of even offering in Sri Lanka through our postgraduate institutes or even uh, other places, nano degrees. And there's another concept called micromasters. So you can find these nano degrees and micromasters under Udacity, right? So, so the world is so open, so broad. Unless we conquer these things, we will not get into these things. So I'm, I'm opening up these avenues for you all. Please join these programs maybe related to your masters that you are doing at PGIS, or maybe something totally different, or maybe you can get the most basic qualification on machine learning through these courses, if it is to, even if it is totally not related to you, but you can get to know what machine learning is, or big data, you can get uh, yourself qualified on big data analysis, or even artificial intelligence, AI, or even Facebook marketing, there are courses, so if you want, if you are spending time on Facebook, spend time for a worthy course on Facebook, right? So opening up avenues for, for all of you. And uh, in, in especially in the higher education, we are worried about uh, plagiarism, right? We are talking about plagiarism, especially from the academic staff perspective. In my case, uh, I'm not worried about plagiarism at all because whenever I give, an assignment to students whenever I ask the students to do some work online. What I do is I have already introduced this website to them, smallcotools.com. This is just one website. There are many service providers like this, free. Up to 1,000 words, you can check the plagiarism. Actually, I, I don't like to use the word plagiarism. What I use is similarity checking. I ask the students to please check the similarity and send me the report. So what the students now do is they have to do is they use this web service and they check their uh, document for similarities. And they have to submit the assignment. And at the same time, they have to submit the similarity checking report. So I, I don't have to worry because I personally believe we, as academic staff members, we, we, we have to be so strict to the students and stop all these misbehavior. So let them understand what it is means behavior. So now I see students are coming up with real original work. Even within this software, you can do, you can play, right? Easily, you can just, just by clicking some buttons, you can do it totally upside down and you, there are ways of paraphrasing. Everything is there, but still, I want them to think about plagiarism and be honest to you. To yourself. So these things are open even for all the students. If you are thinking of writing a journal article, you can check it by yourself now. Before sending to the journal, you can check it by yourself because unintentionally sometimes you can write the same sentence as some other people do. 
a very simple example is if you are writing something about uh, Sri Lanka, you if you write uh, Sri Lanka is uh, an island in the Indian Ocean. It's there in everybody's mind. But if you search the same phrase in the Google, you will get millions of hits for which somebody might call it as plagiarism. But no, it's not plagiarism. It's, it's, a, it's a common statement. Because you can't paraphrase. Sri Lanka is an island in the Indian Ocean. You can't paraphrase that. It's a fact. So I'm opening up avenues for you all to think further about your work, your future, your publications, your PhDs in the future, your, your assignments that you're submitting to your staff members, try to develop in you. Rather than asking the staff member to check the plagiarism and let me know, do it by yourself. For example, if you get caught for plagiarism, it's so bad for you. Why? Maybe you have done it totally unintentionally, but still, you will, you will get a bad brand name. So can you remember the brand that I was talking about? That's the problem. So open up avenues for you all. Always try to organize your work because it's, uh, not the, it's not really a problem sometimes. Sometimes the problem is related to how we see things. Not the, it's not actually not a problem, but the way we see things will create the problem. Look at this one, this elephant. Go from top to bottom. And if I ask you to draw this, can you do it? I'm sure you will have a tough time. When you go from top to bottom, uh, you see, what, what? Okay, this leg, okay, uh, what? No leg here. When you go from the bottom to top, leg, leg, uh, no leg. No, 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 it's not connected to the body. So now you feel it like a problem. But if you try to analyze it differently, so up to this level, the normal elephant, no problem. But up then, then again, if you think of this, again, problem. So if you think of the bottom part, no problem. So what has happened is simply it's combining the gaps. So break down the problem into pieces and try to see it. Break down the problem into pieces. So try to analyze the problem. Then there won't be any problem for sure. Okay. So um, just imagine I'm going to give you 86,400 rupees a day for you. What would you do? I'm sure you can't even think of what to do. 86,400 rupees a day. This is what we are getting in a day in terms of seconds. In, an e in each day, we are getting 86,400 seconds. It's too big number. So we can easily waste that. Uh, you, what, what is that? 86,400 seconds. It's too much. Okay, forget about the seconds. Think of hours. We have 24 hours a day. So we have enough time to do, but we are wasting. So are we really using that time effectively? Even this time, in this lockdown time, you have enough time. So use that time to improve yourself. That's why I say it's a blessing in disguise always. Can you introduce yourself in 30 seconds? Have you ever tried it? I'm always giving you challenges for you to think back at home. If I'm there in an interview, I always ask, okay, as the first question, please introduce yourself in 30 seconds. And I open the uh, clock and give, uh, see the stopwatch and say, okay, 30 seconds is over. Have you done this kind of a thing? So when you are at home now, these are the things that you need to think. Easily, you can come up with a beautiful introduction because you have only 30 seconds. You can't say, I'm Chalinda Benragama. I am uh, from uh, originally from Kalutara and then I'm married to Kendi and now I'm living in Kendi. Uh, are these things important for the interview panel? So what is important? Because 30 seconds is given to market yourself. So what should I say during that time is that matters. Think about this back at home. Is it easy to remember subject matter? Coming back to the subject directly, I'm sure you will say not that easy. Some members will say easy. So I want to introduce one concept 
which I asked in the previous question, mind mapping. Maybe new to you all, please learn about mind mapping. There are so many YouTube videos available. There are many TED Talks in the YouTube. So I, I request all of you to go to YouTube and uh, search for uh, TED Talks rather than searching for Johannes Manike Mage Hite. It's, it's okay, it's, it's a lovely song, but so when you go to YouTube, try to find something that improves you, right? So there are many online software available to do mind mapping. So this one, this mind map, this is not mind map, but it's mind map. So I'm just introducing some free online tools for uh, to do mind mapping. It's, it's a long concept. We can have one full day workshop on this. This can be applied to your subjects, your personal life, day-to-day -day activities, and everything you can do mind mapping. I have introduced this to students uh, in taking down notes. And I see some of the students now, they are crazily following this mind mapping technique in taking down notes. So it's a very nice way of organizing yourself. This is the best time for you to learn all this. So uh, this is one, and this uh, Mind Misters, uh, this is also a very nice tool, uh, online tool to do mind mapping. And this one is also a very nice tool, uh, Coggle. There are many, there are many, and very user-friendly. All the explanations are there. And if you want to learn about these things, go to YouTube and search, just give the uh, software name, you get so many uh, guideline uh, videos on the YouTube. So finally, successful people don't do anything different, but they do the same thing differently. Of course, you can do something different at the same time, but try to do the same thing in a different way so that the people will spot you as a totally different brand. As a totally different brand. So if I ask you to design a chair, I'm sure you will come up with this kind of a thing. You will bend the leg and whatever it is, you will go with the same four legs and the back backrest and the seating area. Can you come up with something like this? Can you think of something like this? Forgetting the four leg concept. Can you think of something like this? If you are asked to design a chair, can you think of more legs on the given same chair? You don't know even where to sit here. Beautiful design for a chair. Lovely. So this is what I'm expecting from all of you students. Come up with something very different. Same chair, but different thinking. Chair is the same. It's a chair concept, but people have started thinking about it differently. Okay. So your learning ability always decides your earning capacity. So this is why I always uh, promote to improve your learning ability. Maybe related to your subject, but still improve your learning ability. Finally, uh, I'm sure you, you love to have uh, this kind of a car one day, Lamborghini. Even in Lamborghinis, there can be flat tires, even in Lamborghinis. So when there's a flat tire, you will never be able to move forward. You will never be able to move forward unless, until you change the tire. So I see the attitude, bad attitude is like a flat tire. Maybe you are so beautiful, so handsome, brilliant brain. But still, if you have the bad attitude, you will never be able to move forward. So humble request is, if you think, or if somebody thinks that you have a bad attitude, change it. Then you will be visible to the outside world as a totally different creature. And at the same time, please have this in your mind. This is one of my main mottos in my life. I'm in no, I'm actually, I'm in competition with no one. I don't compete with anybody. I have no desire to play the game of being better than the others. But I always try my best to be better than what I was yesterday or last year. Can you remember I was talking about um, the, the um, writing down the strengths and weaknesses every year? Because I want to be better than that who, who I was last year. 
So why can't we do, do the same? Why aren't you doing the same? I'm sure you all can do. I'm sure if you follow all these things during this time, this COVID-19 lockdown, your postgraduate studies, definitely, of course, within your postgraduate studies, you can score high. Not only that, going beyond, you can score high in your life. I guarantee that, I bet that I'm 100% sure. So I wish you all the very best in your future. So with that, I thank you so much. And if you have any question, I'll be very happy to answer. Uh, and I see there's a uh, question in the Q&A forum. Let me take that, that question now. Are you using paid versions of menti.com, Padlet, or Kahoot, or the free versions to address around 80 students? Can you give some information about it? Ah, uh, yes. What I'm using right now is the, the actually the free versions, right? There are many, all almost all the software that are available in the internet have the free version, but the apps are limited. But there are certain things like Padlet that I use today, uh, the uh, Mentimeter that I use today, you can go up to even 2,000 students. For example, Mentimeter, the maximum number is 2,000, whereas Padlet, there's no limitation. But there are certain things like Kahoot. Uh, free version allows only few members to join. Um, Kahoot website says only 10, but with my experience, the free version works even up to 50, right? And even the Google uh, the G Suite applications, uh, at one time, you can work with only 100, 100 students. In the, uh, it, there's no paid version as such, but for example, uh, Google Doc or Google Sheet or Google Slides, only um, uh, 100 people can work at the same time. But Google Forms, no problem at all. Okay, that's it from me. Thank you very much. And uh, once again, I'm thanking so much for everybody, uh, all the organizers, Peter Vala, sir, the director, sir, uh, for inviting me to this uh, very important time the twin, the celebrate, in celebrating 25th anniversary in the PGIS. So I'm very happy if I could do any contribution in this 25th uh, anniversary in the PGIS. So once again, thanking all the organizers and all the participants who very actively, very lively join this program for two and a half hours continuously online. Thank you very much. Wishing you all the success. Surely this lockdown period will be an amazing time for you all and definitely consider this as a blessing in disguise. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Salinda. Uh, not only our students, I think uh, we teachers also learn a lot, lot from you. So today I have to bring many things to uh, my home. So I, I hope that the presentation is inspiring as well as very fruitful for not only for students, but also for all of us. So thank uh, first again, I am thankful to you. I am grateful to you for accepting our invitation uh, within a very short period of time and uh, sharing your experience with our students as well as our colleagues. So we expect your service in the future also. I'm very happy uh, that, uh, the, of course, initially participants were only around 210. Uh, anyhow, still the participant number has not been decreased. It indicates that the uh, speech was very attractive to participants. Sir, Professor Benaragava, thank you very much for your contribution. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you.